It's time for our main event, the 130-pound showdown between Manny Pacquiao and Marco Antonio Barrera. No title at stake, but plenty to fight for, as Pacquiao seeks to cement his status as one of the top fighters in the sport, and Barrera looks to leave the sport behind, avenging the most lopsided loss of his career. Pacquiao Barrera 2 is being brought to you by Mandalay Bay, boxing at its best. Tecate Beer, Cerveza with an attitude. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. Manny Pacquiao entered his 2003 fight with Marco Antonio Barrera relatively unknown. His emphatic knockout win catapulted him to the top of the featherweight division. And then after a classic draw with Juan Manuel Marquez and two devastating victories over Eric Morales, he is considered the most exciting and explosive fighter in the sport. Barrera, meanwhile, tries to add another chapter to his already legendary career. But since having beaten Morales in their 2004 rubber match, his most significant fight was a loss against Marquez earlier this year. Now, his opportunity arrives to again reclaim the top spot in one of the sport's most talent-rich divisions in what may very well be his final ring appearance. Welcome back. We have a spectacular setting now inside the Mandalay Bay Event Center. It appears that virtually every seat in the house is full. No doubt about half of them occupied by Marco Antonio Barrera's supporters, many of whom have flown in from Mexico City. The other half occupied by the Pacquiao crowd, many of whom have flown in from Manila. And so it should be, because Manny Pacquiao, Larry Merchant, is his nation's biggest star, a movie star, a television star, celebrated in every way, shape, and form imaginable, even ran for political office there, and is regarded as likely to do so again in the future. But his own trainer, Freddie Roach, acknowledges that some night, some moment in his career, all of the various distractions are likely to catch up to him. Is tonight the night? Jim, his talent will erode, like all fighters, and perhaps even faster because of his relentless style. But he seems a whole lot more likely to explode rather than implode tonight. It's true that he is the most popular figure in his part of the world, a combination of Muhammad Ali and Prince's die. And so all of those interferences with his life. All of those things seem to multiply, but he rides them. He rides them like a surfer on the wave, and he loves it. And so far, boxing is still his number one thing. That said, he is a super fighter right now. He is not a superman. He can lose a fight. Well, it's possible, but let's presume for a second as we turn to Emmanuel Stewart, that Pacquiao is like Jack Dempsey or Aaron Pryor or Richard Duran, and he can go into the ring and continue to perform at the highest level despite all the chaos that might befall his life. If that's the Pacquiao who enters tonight, could Marco Antonio Barrera, at this stage of his career, still have enough left to score the upset? I definitely feel that Marco Antonio Barrera has enough left. And it's really strange saying that, remembering from the Junior Jones days and the fights with Kennedy McKennedy, to realize that he's still fighting at this later age, still on the top level, and fighting which may be the most explosive and dangerous fighter to come along in many years. In fact, Pacquiao is considered, I think, by many to be the pound for pound best. And I give Barrera a very good chance of winning this fight. Fascinating stuff as we get ready for a classic confrontation. The pageantry escalates here in Las Vegas. Let's go to Michael Buffer in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Please rise for three national anthems. First, here to sing the Mexican national anthem, please welcome recording star Inez Zach. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresado y el bridón, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra, al sonoro rugir del cañón y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón siña patria tus sienes de olivo 
lleva de la paz el arcángel divino que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios se escribió mas si os haré un extraño enemigo profanar con su planta tu suelo piensa oh patria querida que el cielo un soldado en cada hijo te dio un soldado en cada hijo te dio mexicanos al grito de guerra el acero apresta y el bridón y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón And now, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing here to sing the national anthem of the Philippines. Please welcome Filipino recording star, Kyla. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to honor the United States of America, here to sing the Star Spangled Banner, please welcome Las Vegas popular entertainer, Cynthia Minx. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the So gallant it's true.
the tape from Manny Pacquiao and Marco Antonio Barrera. The five-year age advantage for Pacquiao is magnified by Barrera's long career. Began as a pro at age 15. This is his 70th entrance into the ring. Half-inch height advantage for the Filipino fighter. Also a half-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in right at 130 pounds, but Manny Pacquiao visibly, undeniably struggled to make weight. Tonight he rehydrates 14 pounds, up to 144. Barrera, closer to the mark it would appear, rehydrates 138, eight pounds, as opposed to yesterday's weigh-in weight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Leto. Before we get to that, Barrera Pacquiao punched at numbers from their first fight, Larry Merchant. Well, the punch stat numbers confirm what we saw. Pacquiao much busier, landing many, many more punches. And that is further confirmed by the big punches, where Pacquiao landed two and a half to one over Barrera. And now the rules of the bout with Harold Letterman. The Manny Pacquiao, Marco Antonio Barrera fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules in the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Now enters Marco Antonio Barrera. In his last fight, he lost a clear decision to Juan Manuel Marquez here in a fight which he himself contended was much closer than the scores. 116-111 for two of the three judges. I thought it was closer too, as many others did, but I'm struck by, as he makes this final walk to the ring, is that he used to be called the baby-faced assassin. And for someone who has been in so many battles for so many years, he still looks pretty good, Emmanuel. I think he looks fantastic considering all those fights he's been into. And he still seems to have his speed. Seven years ago, under similar circumstances, when he was a clear underdog against a hard-punching, growing legend named Prince Nassim Hamed, he came in with a creative, brilliantly constructed fight plan executed it perfectly and so thoroughly upended Hamed that he actually ended the Prince's career. The question is, can he pull off another tactical masterpiece like that tonight against Pacquiao, who clearly has him outgunned in speed and punching power? Pacquiao's a much different and better fighter than Hamed was. And the fact that he's consistent he's, and he's a basic, fundamentally good fighter who punches with power and authority from the beginning to the end of a fight. Unlike a lot of punchers who punch good in the early part, they fade at the end. That's not the case with Pacquiao. And so perhaps that's the reason why when we asked Barrera yesterday, do you have a plan as was the case against Hamed, he said, no, I have three plans for Pacquiao. I think that's a good advice because you never know what's going to work. So now Barrera's crowd has had its moment, and Pacquiao's crowd will be next. He had what amounted to a tune-up fight against Jorge Solis earlier this year. It was an eighth-round knockout for Pacquiao, but by the admission of several around him, it was not his best performance. As he enters tonight, he has spent time shooting a movie in the Philippines with perhaps the biggest female star there. He signed a contract to do a television sitcom starting next year. He's releasing a brand new rap single. He's just finished an unsuccessful run for office. And by the way, he has other interests as well. Yeah, but even if his distractions have distractions, Jim, the way he comes to the ring, smiling, trotting, you know, that boxing is not a distraction in his life. Well, Pacquiao is one of those fighters like Mike Tyson and a lot of other controversial people who have a lot going on in their life outside of the ring, but he's such a fighter that once he comes in the ring, all of that he leaves outside. He loves to fight. On the other hand, his trainer, Freddie Rhodes, has put up a brave face saying, oh, it's no problem that I 
had to go to Cebu in the Philippines to train him because he wouldn't come and do his normal training at my gym in Hollywood. And it's no problem that I've had to try to get him back focused on this despite all of his other interests. You wonder if Freddie is fighting something of a struggle to maintain his own control of Manny Pacquiao's career. That would seem to be obvious, especially in view of the fact that Pacquiao was very upset when he chose to go to Puerto Rico and train Oscar De La Hoya for nearly three months. And when Pacquiao had his own championship fight coming up and he couldn't work with him. And I think that was a way of getting back and bonding back again with Manny, who is his signature fighter. Such are the ego pitfalls of working within the superstar system of boxing as Freddie Roach now constantly does. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay, Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and Bob Arum's Top Ranked Boxing are proud to present the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC International Super Featherweight Championship. Sponsored by Tecate Cerveza with an Attitude, Rockstar Energy Drink, Party Like a Rockstar, and Southwest Airlines, Southwest, the symbol of freedom. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. Tony Alamo, Executive Director Keith Kaiser. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system, Jerry Roth, Tom Schreck, and Glenn Trowbridge. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Tony Weeks. And now from the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing red with silver, official weight, 130 pounds. His professional career, 63 victories, including 42 knockouts against five defeats. Damas y Caballeros de Ciudad de Mexico, the three-time champion of the world, the baby face assassin, Marco Antonio. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with flames, official weight, 130 pounds. His professional record, 34 victories, including 34 knockouts, three defeats, two belts even. From General Santos City, the fighting pride of the Philippines, the defending WBC international champion and two-time world champion, Manny Pac-Man Okay, gentlemen, caballeros, you already received your instructions. Usted recibe your instructions. Okay, right here is good. Internet's going be low. Mira, aquí está bien, aquí no. Right here is good. Internet's going be low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. I want a good, clean fight. Yo quiero una play Olympia. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourself at all times. Escúchame, cuídate. Listo? Ready? Let's go. Vámonos. These are the preeminent drama kings of boxing. Pacquiao for his KO power. Herrera for his theatrical comebacks. Let the curtain rise.
it be a repeat of San Antonio? The onslaught by Pacquiao? Or will it be something different? And incidentally, forgotten, of course, after the bad beating Barrera took down in Texas that night, is that he knocked Pacquiao down in the first round. Here, they start out tactically, and now Barrera steps forward to attack. Barrera was a four to one favorite four years ago. Pacquiao is a three and a half to one favorite tonight. Both fighters seem extremely conscious in the first minute, Emmanuel. Yes. Keeping their guards up and stopping anything big at the outset. Yes, you know, and Pacquiao, I, I thought, would come out a little bit faster than he has. But you've got to watch his straight left hand. That's the one thing that Barrera has to be watching all the time. Barrera careful early to keep his distance. So that Pacquiao can't come in and strafe him with the double left hand. And Pacquiao's back and back fighting too technical, and that's not it, and that's not his fight. And if you can get a guy like him to back up, you've got him off track already from the beginning. And that's what Barrera is doing pretty effectively. Straight right hand for Barrera. Pacquiao hasn't landed anything of significance so far. Marcos mixed in a couple jabs, a couple straight right hands. Pacquiao leads with the left. Tony Weeks already warning Barrera not to hold Pacquiao behind the head as Marco was conscious of needing to control Manny when he got in close. Now Pacquiao starts to try to be aggressive behind the jab. Left hook to the body, one of Barrera's better weapons. Barrera is trying to make it a technical fight, but I think as soon as Pacquiao gets warmed up, he's going to start punching a lot more. Only one minute remaining in round one. It might be a small psychological victory for Barrera to feel as though he could put a round in the books to start. Pacquiao lands a straight left on the chest of Barrera. Works behind his jab and tries to get closer. Manny starting to assume the role of the aggressor. Jab lands for Pacquiao. Barrera comes back with an attempted left and a right. Pacquiao lands his jab again. Barrera occasionally forcing right hand leads. Barrera used to be a risk taker. Now he's a risk calculator. Making sure to control Pacquiao in close. And Tony Weeks again tells him don't hold behind the head. Round one is fought at a pace which suits the older fighter, Marco Antonio yes, Barrera. Yeah, definitely. That round will be very difficult to score. Very nice. Keep it that way with the jab. 1-0, 1-0. Don't stay in front of him. Don't stand in front of him. Keep moving, moving, keep moving. You're doing real good. But be careful with his head. You hit him a hook to the body. It was great. He felt it. Now keep insisting on that. Good job, Vinny. A little busy with the jab, OK? And the feints are working good, OK? Now, you see how he's reaching for the face. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Open him up with the face. You hear me? Here we see Pacquiao letting his favorite punch in his pet punch. Straight left hand through the center. Maybe the most effective punch landed in the entire first round. Emmanuel, is there some way for Barrera to neutralize that left hand, try to make Pacquiao beat him some other way? Well, I don't I think he's trying to do that, but you, you, you've had as many fights as Burrow had. You, you're set in your ways. But in this, the interesting that the most effective punch has always been the straight left hand from Pacquiao, but he's now trying to use his right hand a little bit more also. But mainly Pacquiao, you have to watch for a straight left hand. Copy box numbers were sparse. Pacquiao, 8 out of 43. Barrera, 9 out of 49. You heard Barrera's brother Jorge say, go back to your left hook to the body. It's the first time in his 70 ring entrances as a professional that Barrera is not with his longtime lead trainer, Rudy Perez. No, and, he, and he, he's still going straight back, not making any movement when the upper body, whatever Pacquiao comes in with that straight left. And that can be deadly. In fact, he needs to let Pacquiao miss and then punch after Pacquiao misses. That's when he's out of position. Barrera trying to hit Pacquiao with his jab or his left of the body as Manny comes in. 
Tony Weeks says to Barrera, keep him up. And now he's been verbally warned twice for holding behind the head and once told to keep his punches up. But nothing in the way of a real official warning by Weeks. Barrera using small steps to keep moving in a radius, try to make it a little bit more difficult for Pacquiao to find the straight line. This is one thing Freddie Roach clearly expected is that Barrera would fight at angles and avoid ever being squared up with the harder punching Pacquiao. Good stinging right jab by Pacquiao. He tries a hook and Barrera taps him to the body with the right hand. It, it a big left hand for Pacquiao. Barrera lands a left in return. Barrera shooting the right. Pacquiao leading straight up the middle with the left and landing. Good left hand by Marco Antonio Barrera. When he lands his jab, Pacquiao can't start his power punching. Barrera is exposing a lot of the weaknesses on Pacquiao's part. Protecting his balance. Well, at the end of the day, as good a boxer as Manny Pacquiao may continue to become, and he's improved a lot, he's likely never to have the craft that Barrera has had through the latter stages of his career. Marco Antonio Barrera is a technical master of the sport. Which is rather amazing because there was a time when he was the Pacquiao of the sport. The baby assassin. But he realized when going up against fighters like Ahmed that he'd have to change his game. There's a big left hand for Pacquiao. But for the most part, by staying at angles, Barrera is blunting a lot of Pacquiao's aggressive assault. And Pacquiao looks physically so much stronger, though. Combinations, very good, okay? Yeah. All right, we have the combination, remember. In, in and out, okay? Yeah. All right, make him. Hook to the body. Hurt him, hurt him. Let go of that jab. Hurt him, pop him. And keep using that jab. Jab, jab, jab. Move your body also. Bend your waist. Manny Pacquiao says that he wanted a toe to toe fight, but that was not in the contract. Coffee box numbers in round two. Pacquiao 24 out of 59, landing at a good high 41% connect percentage, including 16 out of 30 power shots. Barrera 15 out of 54, including 7 of 37 jabs. Marco Antonio Barrera has gotten a pace that he likes and a mostly tactical fight, but Pacquiao may still be winning the rounds. That would be discouraging to the Mexican warrior. Barrera seems to still be a little tentative. I saw him fight before him. He would counter punch with a lot more authority. And uh, he's having difficulty in finding his range also. Well, he's showing but, tremendous respect. And, yes. And at some point, he may have to show less respect to have a chance. Yes, he's going to have to. because, he, And one thing about him, he can fight and will fight if he has to. But he, he's letting Barrera get a, a Matt Pacquiao get a good momentum right now by acting a little too timid. Sometimes a fighter at the end of his career has difficulty pulling the trigger on what were once openings for good shots. Barrera doesn't seem to have the kind of offensive reflexes that once were the case. No, even the reflexes that he showed when he fought Marquez. Hard right hand over the top. Barrera stung Pacquiao with that shot. Momentary opening for Marco to take a little more command of the fight. Pacquiao lands a left. Barrera comes right back. Miles, Miles, stop. The fire is building in round number three. That's, that's exactly what Barrera's got to do a lot of. When Pacquiao throws that left hand, Barrera should bend over to his right, let it go over his shoulders, 
and then come back with counter punches while Pacquiao is out of position. Particularly the left hook to the body would be available. Yeah, very effective. Anything. Pacquiao talking in the ear of Barrera as they get close to each other. You get the sense, Emmanuel, that it almost might be a benefit to Barrera if Pacquiao had a, a big violent rally and roughed him up a little bit because it might loosen him up yeah, and get him into the fight. It bike. would ignite him only because he, he still can slow to stand toe to toe when he has to. Yeah, but his mantra was, I'm, I have to fight not being angry, fighting under control. Pacquiao landing his jab. Landing his jab again. Trying to find a situation for the left hand. Barrera shooting that upward hook. Pacquiao easily stepped away. Barrera goes back to throwing his jab and lands one. Barrera a little tentative with the right hand. Pacquiao not tentative with the straight left. Three zero. You see how you box him and you faked him? Very nice. You're doing a really good job. Three zero. And that's the way you have to keep going. Just how you're doing it now. Just how you're doing it now. Keep on it. Same thing. He's not doing anything to you. Okay, Manny. You're here. Remember, keep stepping to your right. All right, don't follow him. Yeah. All right? Okay. Don't follow him. Cut that yeah. ring off for me, okay? Yeah. Here you see Barrera land the right hand on Pacquiao, and he should have stepped back and been a little bit more aggressive after that to follow up, because Pacquiao gets out of position quite often in the fight. CompuBox numbers in three showing Barrera's tentativeness. He was five out of 31. Pacquiao, 15 out of 53. Let's see how Harold Letterman scored the first three rounds. Okay, Jim, three rounds to nothing, 30 to 27, Manny Pacquiao. Jimmy's walking him down, coming straight forward. He's throwing that right hand, Manny Pacquiao. It's not a hard right hand. Occasional jab, he'll, he'll wave a right hook like he did just there. Not, not, not doing any damage with the right hand, but then he comes across with that straight left hand. That does score points. When Barrera punches, it's only one at a time, and he really hasn't hurt Pacquiao yet. What gets me is Freddie Roach tells this guy step to the right. He wants to go straight forward. Oh, and you don't want to step to the right. Three to nothing, Pacquiao. Interestingly. I think, Frenchy, I think Freddie Rhodes knows something about his fighter, Stop. Harold. I have it one, one, and one. And interestingly, Marco Antonio Barrera's brother, Jorge, was quite expressive in the corner saying, you've won the first three rounds, you're up three to nothing. He may be deluding his own brother and fighter. Chances are Marco knows better. And now they fight. Momentary flurry. Harold was right on point in saying that Barrera is throwing one punch in a round. You wonder when Marco is going to try to throw yeah, combinations. Yeah, yeah. Barrera should be more aggressive because Pekka is not a counter puncher. As long as you're punching at him, you may miss, but you're not going to get hit too often because he's not a counter puncher. But he punches very good when he's moving forward. They trade body shots. In every clinch, incidentally, Pacquiao has been speaking in Barrera's ear. Marco, to our sights, hasn't said anything in return yet. Straight left hand for Pacquiao lands again. Stop, stop, stop. That's the good plan for getting away of the straight left. But you got to throw something. That's right. He's not doing it. He's not making him pay for it. He's still fighting a little too tentative. Pacquiao's punch is longer and stronger. Barrera blocking with his gloves there. But blocking won't win. Trying to make sure he doesn't make a mistake more than trying to make sure that he makes Pacquiao make mistakes. No, 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 It could be a part of Barrera's thought process that Pacquiao will be short on stamina and that he could overhaul him in the late rounds. That doesn't seem likely for the older fighter against the younger guy. No. And if stealing rounds is an option by flurrying down the stretch, 
Herrera isn't doing that no. either. No, he's not doing anything. He's fighting a mildly conservative technical fight. But not too much spirit in A survival it. fight. Yes. And I think if he'd be more aggressive, he could be more effective. Jinky Pacquiao, wife of Manny. Very public in the last couple of years. It's impossible to be connected to Manny and not be public, particularly <laughs> in the Philippines. He nullifies his right hand. He can't do nothing if he keeps doing that, okay? Tell him a way. Pag nauna kang umikot doon, pag umikot siya, hindi niya makagalaw sa'yo, okay? Naunahan mo. Tapos yung jab mo, una lagi jab-jab. Straight, hanan, hook. Galaw ulo. Okay, in hand. Galaw Okay. okay. Minti ng galaw, yun pa rin. Okay. CompuBox numbers in round four, it's a wash. Pacquiao out of 63 punches, landed 26. Barrera, five out of 30. Marco Antonio Barrera just not giving himself a chance to be in the fight so far. Absence of aggression, absence of passion, absence of combination punching. Showing signs of that beating four years ago. You know, the Packer is not really landing that much neither, but it just his body rather than as you can see, he looks like more confident. And you know, that like he, 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 he has so much more aggression in him. Stop, stop. He's fighting. He's fighting. I wonder if Barrera is going to be satisfied for this to be his last fight. Stop. Good left hook to the body by Barrera, and suddenly he puts a flurry of punches together. Giving Pacquiao a chance to come back with a hard one, too. Most of the left hands that I see left Pacquiao landing by are off balance, Emmanuel. Yes. He, he hasn't had a chance to throw a real power punch on him. Stop. Which I guess is the point from Barrera's side of the match. Yes, Barrera's got the right strategy. Just think, like I said, there's a little bit more spirit to it. He, I think he, he would win this fight, but I just don't know. He's, he's fighting a good fight still, considering everything. Well, given the nature of his career and the glory of his image, yeah. more and more you begin thinking, if it's not going to be competitive, it would be better to see him go out on his shield. Hard right hand by Pacquiao. And Barrera decides to fight back immediately. And now, suddenly, they trade. And Marco catches Pacquiao with a big right hand. And a left hand. And Pacquiao momentarily stunned. And comes back with the aggression of his own. And that's what the crowd has been waiting for. But you see who still is the one that's coming with the snarl on his face. is still Pacquiao. And still bouncing. Yeah. And still yeah. up yeah. on yeah. his feet. Yeah. yeah, but Barrera had the better of the exchange, well, I thought. He had the better of the exchange. Well, sure. you don't win an exchange with a smile, man. You'll... No, but if there's anything I'm looking out for that, he should have come back right back. Because Pacquiao is not too, da too dangerous if he keeps him going back. Good right hand there again. Filipino crowd trying to get Pacquiao going. Manny, Manny, Manny. They trade shots again in the center of the ring. Hard left hand. Two of them by Pacquiao. Barrera comes back with a straight right. More and more it appears Barrera's going to have to accept the danger and give it a shot. He gets straight by a right hook. That's the punch that Pacquiao has so improved with. Big left hand by Manny. Ten seconds to go in the round. Too much noise for either fighter to have heard the clock board. Barrera goes back to fighting again. And maybe Marco won a round. Come on, come on, Wade. Let's wade during the long haul. Wade, don't exchange punches now. Come on, we've got to keep working the jab. Work the jab. Move your body. Bend your waist. Come on, not yet, Marco. Not yet, Marco. Relax, not yet. Relax. That's what he wants, to exchange punches with you. We're not going to do that. Relax. Relax. You're better. Here you see Pacquiao coming in with a left and a little follow-up right off balance, but nevertheless, he's so aggressive that Barrera couldn't take advantage of it. And here you see Barrera coming back with a series of punches with Pacquiao on the ropes where he cannot fight too good. Let's go, Rick. 
Philadelphia Bucks. Numbers in the fifth. Still the edge for the more active Pacquiao. 31 out of 71. 19 out of 54 for Barrera. Pacquiao 27 out of 46 power shots. Both boxers in beautiful red trunks. Gloriously colorful scene in the ring. Let's see how both corners have responded to the firefight that took place in round five as the fight suddenly dramatically changed. Well, Barrera's corner, his brother, doesn't want him doing that, even though it appeared that he had the better of it. He told him, no, don't do it. Save it for the later rounds. Leading me again to wonder whether they think that Pacquiao's going to run out of stamina. Hasn't happened before. No, Pacquiao's name is all the way through. He has tremendous energy. After all, he knocked Barrera out in the 11th in San Antonio. After throwing a lot of punches. Body shots by Manny Pacquiao. Barrera trying to pick his spots upstairs. Gets rocked with a right hand. Gets backed into a corner. Gets caught with another combination. Gets rocked with body shots. Pacquiao all over Barrera when he gets him into that corner. showing respect for Barrera. As he put it, Barrera is still Barrera. He's not going to just be completely reckless going after him. Good hard body shot by Barrera. Pacquiao straightens up and looks for another opportunity. Another jab and a right hand for Barrera. Seeming to focus his right hand on the body for the moment. May need to make up a small deficit in body shots as... That's a, that's a beautiful. But you notice every time the Pacquiao gets hit, he explodes. It just like ignites him. Well, that's the way fighters are. Yep. This is what made Manny Pacquiao the most explosive and exciting fighter in boxing. Lands a solid right hook. Lands a straight left hand. Faster hands carrying the day again. Barrera had a little flurry. Pacquiao came on with an onslaught. Right away, as soon as he gets hit, he comes back right away. He doesn't wait and come back. He does it instinctively. Circling to the right, you can control him at all times. Very good. Okay. Keep that control. The feints are working beautiful. Work off the paint. The jab, the jab. Use the jab, use the jab. Come on. He's got nothing. Work him. Use your jab. Fake him. Use your jab. Fake him. Fake him a lot. Here you see Barrera catch Pacquiao coming in with a beautiful counter right hand. And there you see both of the guys exchanging punches right here. Happy box numbers in round six. Pacquiao 23 out of 62. Barrera 13 out of 55. Pacquiao 19 out of 37 power shots. Halfway through, Pacquiao has landed exactly twice as many punches as Marco Antonio Barrera. Harold, how do you have it through six? Five rounds to one. 59, 55. Manny Pacquiao. I, I gotta say this, Jim. You know what I love about Manny Pacquiao? He hits you with that left hand, and like all great fighters, the next thing he does is he steps to the side so he doesn't get hit with a counter shot. Barrera can't do that. He's too old. Watch Pacquiao whack him with a right hand, hit him with a left, and then move out of Barrera's way. You know, when Marco comes back with that counter. Beautiful, beautiful work by Manny Pacquiao. Five to one, Pacquiao. I have it three rounds to two with one even for Pacquiao. So those are two entirely different views of the fight. Harold Letterman has Manny Pacquiao four points ahead. 
And Larry Merchant has Manny Pacquiao one point ahead. First minute of the seventh round has been another tactical exercise. Yeah, how do you defuse a bomb? Very, very carefully, which is how Herrera is trying to do it. Well said. There are big screens in the arena which show our video replays between rounds. And I was fascinated during the last between round period to see all three judges looking up at the big screens and carefully watching the replays. Yeah, it's just gonna be very difficult. It's not an easy fight to, to judge, really. The only thing is when, when Barrera punches, he doesn't have the power or the confidence in his, in his punches that he's had in the past. And he's not throwing and, or landing as many. It, no, he's not throwing as many. And every time that he does land a clean blow, it just ignites Pacquiao, and Pacquiao comes right back and gets right back in the fight right away. I'll tell you who's nervous about this fight. It's all those fighters who bet Pacquiao to knock Barrera, all those betters who bet Pacquiao to knock Barrera out again. Some of them have already gone by the wayside because some of them would have been betting for him to do it in the first three or six rounds. That hasn't happened. Pacquiao does look momentarily content to carve out a round after round decision and wait for an opportunity against a fighter who may be too smart to give it to him if he's just fighting to survive. If Barrera thinks there's sufficient honor in just going 12 rounds in his last fight with a slugger like Manny Pacquiao, those knockout betters may be out of luck. And that's what he looks like he's trying to do. He's trying to box, play it safe, not take too many risks. You know, after Junior Jones knocked Barrera out, Barrera boxed him in the next fight and lost the decision. And this resembles that strategy. Deep breath. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay. Okay. Manny. Brad. Deep breath. Keep that. Keep that. Jump, jump. Keep that. Come on. Build up confidence. Come on. You got it. You're winning it. Come on, but you got to throw more. Be stronger. Throw more. Be stronger. Be more intense. Is Marco Antonio Barrera going to go out with a bang or a whimper? Round eight begins. Barrera's brother in the corner continuing to try to prop this fighter up with the suggestion that he's winning the fight. That seems to be a stretch. Pacquiao having to reach to find Barrera, who's very conscious of creating distance. Barrera sneaks a right hand around Pacquiao's guard, takes a hard right hand in return for his trouble. Pacquiao's fast-handed combinations, gradually creating more and more space between his connect numbers and those of Barrera. Barrera has certainly neutralized the power of Pacquiao, but he has not been able to take advantage of that. Because he can't deal with the speed. Manny's simply too fast and too able to get off punches and flurries. There's a good counter shot combination by Barrera. And what, what I've noticed, so Pacquiao has been more effective with his right hand than he has in the past. He's been pretty good with that right jab that he shoots. And, and he throws his left hand, he'll come back with a straight right after that every time. Stop, stop. One thing about Eric Morales that surely all Morales fans are thinking right now. He was outgunned by Manny Pacquiao, but he went in and stop, fought stop. him tooth and nail. Yes, he did. He made every round a gunfight. This is the fight, really. Barrera of about a year ago, I think, would win. If he still thinks he's that I, fighter I hate to, of a year I hate to year say, ago. but maybe the fighter that even just lost a close decision to Marquez even just said recently. Seemed like it was a lot more speed and snap there when he fought Marquez. Marquez wasn't as dangerous. Pacquiao is still being treated with great respect 
by a fighter who knows where to place it. Hard left hand by Pacquiao. Guerrero's had a couple of good combination flurries in this stop, round. Stop. Otherwise is content to keep it tactical. Hard left hand by Pacquiao, knocks Guerrero back. Marco may feel a need to answer that. Marco Pacquiao's great speed that he can bull rush you and still land the punches because he gets them off in such a hurry. Well, he punches and gets out of balance and still keeps punching, so he had so much on the defense that you can't take advantage of his mistakes. Now Barrera takes advantage of a little mistake there and manages to get an accommodation. But those moments have been few and far between for Marco Antonio. <laughs> The rounds are running out. So we finished ah! eight of a scheduled 12 without Barrera making any significant breakthrough against Pacquiao's technique. It'll be interesting to see what the punch count was that round. Come on. When you throw four, you hit him four completely, solidly. He's got nothing. Come on. More jab, more jab, more contact. Come on, he's tired already. He's tired. All you have to do is press a little bit more. He gave that round away, man. Come on now. We're going to pick it up. All right. You take his, you, you, when you move your right, you take his right hand away from me, can he? In that round, and you said it would be interesting to hear the copy box numbers, Emmanuel, Barrera was 15 out of 55, Pacquiao was 26 out of 54. So there was a significant edge for Pacquiao and landed punches. Nevertheless, Freddie Roach said to Manny, you gave that round away. Average copy box numbers per round through eight, Pacquiao 18 out of 49, Barrera 9 out of 40. Marco Antonio Barrera, not aggressive enough to really be in the fight, or so it would appear, against Manny Pacquiao so far. Well, you know, going into this fight, Barrera announcing that this is his last hurrah, I thought, well, what if it's a great fight? What if he beats Pacquiao in an action-packed fight and they're dangling big money for him? Well, even if he eked out a victory here, there would never be a third fight. This may indeed be Barrera's last hurrah. And I think it's bad to master your last fight because if a fight is even close, why give the decision to a guy who's going to be quitting boxing as compared Stop. to somebody who's going to remain in boxing? So it, to me, would kind of prejudice the officials against you all. So make that announcement after you retire, after the fight. It's about 80 pounds south of there and a different kind of style matchup. But this reminds me a little bit of Larry Holmes against Michael Spinks in his last two fights as heavyweight Stop, champion. Stop. Unable or unwilling to pull the trigger, regardless of what opening might be there. Pacquiao, on the other hand, sometimes seems to be lulled to sleep by Barrera. Then he comes back with something like that. Stop, stop. Hard contact with the left hand by Manny Pacquiao. Drove Barrera into the ropes. Well, Barrera said he had a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. I'm, I'm looking for plan D here, which is just to attack and take his chance. Well, I, I like your analogy about defusing a bomb, Larry. You know, he's he's trying to very carefully defuse a bomb, but he's running out of time to get it done. It looks just like a tedious enterprise. There. He needs a lot more of that. Big for Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, Pacquiao's got great balance when he starts moving on his toes. That's what I like. He can move and bounce and punch from all those weird angles while he's punching and then bouncing at the same time. Stop, stop.
tenth round. Okay. Two combinations. Arms down, baby. Arms down, baby. Now you think him, he's reaching. Look at the hook right hand, okay? Manny. You've got to finish now. Stop pulling up. Yeah. You've got to finish the combinations. I'm doing nine. Right. I'm doing a half. Come on, press, be press, be powerful. Come on, this is the last one, this is the last one for your family. This is tense. Come on, show your conditioning. He hasn't hurt you at all. Well, now Barrera is getting the right push from his corner. They're telling him he has to go out and fight. Well, it was all emotional, though. I heard nothing tactical in the way of a suggestion that he should step forward and trade punches. It was all about honor for your family and stuff like that. Harold, how do you have it I'll coming you. to the 10th? 89, 82, eight rounds to one, Manny Pacquiao. Jim, I got to tell you, there's nothing different about the way Manny Pacquiao's fighting now than he did when the first, you know, when the fight first started. He flips out that right jab or a right hook, comes across with that straight hard left hand. Barrera keeps backing up, occasionally stops, and throws a combination. But stop, stop. Pacquiao is doing all the damage. Manny Pacquiao, based on mostly clean punching, just like you saw there. I have it six stop. rounds to two with one even for Pacquiao. The one thing Barrera has accomplished is to put a very raucous, extremely involved crowd more or less to sleep in round 10 of a schedule 12. It's probably not what he had in mind. Stop, help. In his next life, beginning after this, one of the things Barrera promises to do is to go to broadcasting school to become a professional boxing commentator. He's a very intelligent man. Brilliant. He's a very, very smart man. And if he goes through all that, he'll someday face the hard job of having to criticize someone he genuinely admires for the way that he's fighting. You know, and he, I think he says he's managing fighters at Mexico now, about 20 some fighters he's got. Let's hope he manages them to fight more entertainingly than this. Let's hope if he ever has to talk about a great fighter who's fighting this way, he'll say the truth. It's well, not pretty. Keep him up, keep him up, keep him up. He'll say, watch me when I was young, not when I was old. Stop, stop. Another rare moment from Barrera, but one combination and then moving away. He's gone from one punch at a time in the early rounds, as Harold accurately described, to one combination at a time and then creating a lot of lull space. Stop, stop, stop. Come on, come on, come on. Keep it clear, keep it clear. That Pacquiao fighting at the pace he wanted him to just can't much yes. do anything about it. He's done a beautiful job of controlling the fight and the tempo of the fight exactly where he wants it to be. Okay, Just a little bit more fire, a little bit more power. So the brain matter is willing, but the flesh is weak. For Marco Antonio Barrera. Okay. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Yeah, come on, you got to throw more. Throw more, Marco. Come on, Marco, there's no more. Come on, we've got to press. We've got to press. We've got to press. They can't rob us. We've got to press. Come on, 11 and 12 left. He's not doing anything to you. I want to show it. I want you right there. Stop fooling around, okay? Manny, this fight's way too close. This fight's way too close. We should remember as we go to the 11th, judges are not blessed with compu box numbers or if you choose, confused by compu box numbers. And uh, they don't have video monitors which show them everything and perfect clear detail as is sometimes the case here. 
And two of these three judges are less experienced than might Stop. normally be the case for a fight of this magnitude. That's right. You know, but, but Barrera's got the fight. It's the exact tempo he wanted. Oh, yeah, everything. And, and, but still, Pacquiao still setting the tempo as far as, as far as aggressiveness. And going down the stretch, it looks like Pacquiao's going to try to be busier. And, and he can do that pretty good because he's got fast legs. He's going in and out. Well, Freddie Roach, you can almost hear Freddie worrying that something unusual could conceivably be going on. Yes, he says, Manny, this fight's too close. But this is a type of a fight that could be given to Barrera by Sam. So worst decisions. And it, it, wouldn't, it would, wouldn't be a fight that you could argue about too much. Oh, stop, stop. For the most part, it's, it's just been tit for tat. You can't give the fight to the fighter who's just trying to lower the temperature. It shouldn't, but it happens. certainly does from time to time. We've seen judges do that. There was a judge who had Corey Spinks beating Jermaine Diller in Memphis. And what Spinks want to do is lower the temperature. Now momentarily they fight again and Herrera gives as good as he gets in that exchange. Makes you wonder what might have happened if he'd done it all night. Probably the inevitable. But the energy and the strength is still looks so much with Pacquiao even though I think Herrera's maybe matching him punch for punch maybe even beating him. But it just Pacquiao looks so strong, so much energetic. And sometimes that impresses judges, but who knows? We saw the fight with Forbes and Mahata. The judges went for the goal the fighter with the more precision punches. Now Pacquiao begins to do damage, and Barrera's got no choice but to try to rise. Yeah. And he staggers off of the left hand by Pacquiao. And he comes back with a right to the body. Enough. Bad headbutt. Big time headbutt by Barrera. And okay. Marco comes to the corner with blood. No, Marco, I think, I think he hit Barrera, hit Pacquiao, I think, on the break after the getting butted, I think. Yeah. 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 Pacquiao, Pacquiao, look, Pacquiao. Pacquiao looks, looks dazed like he's Pacquiao, I think, I think he was a, hit. Like he's reeling yeah. around the ring no, after getting a. A big punch. Okay. Herrera has blood all over his chest and his right cheek. One point over here. One point. One point deduction for Herrera. It's hitting on the break, and that's the deduction by Tony Weeks. We'll be able to show it to you in replay between rounds. There's always been that that mean streak in Herrera that occasionally would break out in frustration. But knowing that he's got that point taken away and his man is temporarily dazed, supposedly, he should have came out and tried to be a little bit more aggressive in, in terms of power punching. Just not programmed to do it tonight. Just not programmed to go after him and fight tonight. That would have been the moment if ever it existed. Instead, he backed off. Still showing total respect for Manny Pacquiao's speed and power. And why not? Pacquiao strafed him in San Antonio four years ago. Don't move him. Don't move him. How are you feeling? Come on. He's tired. He's very tired. It's the last one. Throw with everything. Come on. It's the last one. Kill him. Kill him. Freaking beautiful. Double yeah. jab, left hand. Okay. I'm going to get one more, okay? Come on. Come on. Emmanuel, let's take a look at what happened okay, here. Right. And ultimately, it led to a one point okay, penalty for Marco Antonio oh, oh. Barrera. Right here, you see Barrera hit him with a tremendous right hand punch. And I, just, just as the referee was breaking him, was on a break, and the referee felt that he, he did it on purpose. I was wanting to see where he got the butt. He got, got to cut it below his eye, but evidently we didn't pick that up. We think, according to our videotape, we're now thinking that a punch caused the cut on his cheek. Once upon a time, 
we would see Barrera box for half of a fight. If it wasn't working, he'd tear after Morales. He just has been unable to do that to Pacquiao. Filipino crowd chanting for their man, hoping for a dramatic last round knockout. Let's see if Barrera has anything on his mind other than surviving the 12 rounds. Even though it, I feel that Pacquiao's won the fight, if I was a fan, stop, I could stop. easily be worried and, uh, and concerned about a decision because Pacquiao's never had a sustained attack where he really had him hurt at all in his fight, unlike most of his fights. So I, I, could, I could see a, a call for worry from some of the people that support him and from his corner. Harold Letterman's going to wind up giving 11 of 12 rounds to Pacquiao in all probability. Seems unlikely. Well, he, he's won the fight, I think, but just compared to the way he's normally won his fights. Been much more convincing than this use aside from the Marquez fight. Well, is is that enough to satisfy Marco Antonio Barrera? And, and how disappointing if, if that's the case. Now the old warrior looks for another chance. Quickly gives his gloves to Tony Weeks as if to say, let me at it. Admirable aggression with a minute to go. Marco Antonio Barrera had to wait four years for his chance at revenge against Manny Pacquiao. Part of the wait was occasioned by a cold war between two major promoters in the sport. Cold war that was brought to a close just a few months ago. So item one at the end of the Cold War was to give Barrera his chance at revenge. But apparently it came too late for him to really be able to deliver the goods against the most violent and explosive fighter in the lower weight classes, Manny Pacquiao. Well, we didn't get a, a hot war climax. We got a Cold War climax. Looks as though they're going to finish it out. Trading punches tactically in the center of the ring. No chance for the stylish knockout that Pacquiao's fans wanted. No chance for the tactical triumph that Barrera's fans might have envisioned. A whimper. Not a bang. The judges include the estimable Jerry Roth, as highly regarded as any judge, Nevada State Athletic Commission puts forth, and one of the most experienced in the world with 139 title fights under his belt, including 115-113 Mayweather over Oscar De La Hoya, May of this year. Tom Schreck, visiting in from New York, only six title fights, but had seemingly the right score with Miguel Cotto ahead of Zab Judah in New York earlier this year at the moment when Cotto knocked Judah out. Glenn Trowbridge, relatively light previous dossier, only 11 title fights. But there was a moment, of course, when Jerry Roth only had 11 title fights. And recently notable, had Moskayev ahead of Rachman going into the 12th round when Moskayev scored his dramatic KO. Filipino fans booing Barrera as he tours the ring. Mexican fans booing Pacquiao as he stands up on the ropes to celebrate. Yeah, a lot. A lot, huh? 
Michael Buffer stands by with the official scores. After 12 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Jerry Roth and Glenn Trowbridge, 118-109. Tom Schreck, 115 to 112. To the winner by unanimous decision, still champion from the Philippines, Manny. So Manny Pacquiao continues his ongoing conquest of the nation of Mexico, adding a second victory over Marco Antonio Barrera to his two victories over Eric Morales. The unsettled issue, of course, his draw with Juan Manuel Marquez, and the possibility now exists for a fight in the not-too-distant future between Pacquiao and Marquez to settle that score. Pacquiao has knocked out a variety of other lesser Mexican fighters on the way to this particular juncture. The CompuBox numbers confirming what you've seen throughout the fight, which was a one-sided victory for Pacquiao, fashioned on greater, faster activity, harder punching. There's no area of the sport in which Manny Pacquiao did not dominate a supplicant Marco Antonio Barrera tonight. And I say supplicant because, unfortunately, the great Barrera, in his last appearance in the ring, appeared to fight most of the time for the purpose of surviving 12 rounds rather than to give himself a chance to win. Absolutely, Jim. And I think if he'd have stepped it up, he had a good opportunity tonight. This was a perfect, perfect night for him to score an upset victory and to finish up his career on a high note. But he didn't do it, so Manny Pacquiao is the winner, standing by with Larry Merchant in the ring. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Manny. Manny, did you think he didn't want to fight you? Yeah, uh, that's what I thought before the fight, that um, he's going to box me, you know. Um, I wouldn't expect that, uh, that style. Were you disappointed that you didn't get the kind of fight you wanted and that you couldn't exert your power on him? You know, uh, for me, I'm, I'm satisfied with that, that winning because uh, uh, I won already, but, you know, um, I hope the people are happy on that fight. You're satisfied because you feel that he was able to fight the of survival, and if that's what he wanted to fight, there was no way you could knock him out. Well, um, <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, to make uh, people happy, to give a good fight, to give a good show tonight. And, you know, I hope that uh, people uh, like it, this uh, fight tonight. And, and, you know, we do, we do our best. And, you know, I pray the Lord that uh, no, no got, nobody got hurt, uh, both of us tonight. Were you at all concerned ever that maybe you would not get the decision? Well, um, uh, on my preparation and on, on, in training on this fight, is uh, I believe that I, I can even uh, 12 round decision is I can make it. What are your final thoughts on the fight? Do you feel that it was out of your power to influence the fight with your power? Well, um. I'm still uh, careful on, uh, on on the fight because he's still a, he's still a good fighter too, and uh, you know he's not a, he's not easy opponent. He's still a, a beast fighter. So do you think the first fight was still in his mind, and he just didn't want to get hit by you? Um, I I think I'm just lucky on the first fight. Uh, the, the fight did not happen. Thank you very much. Right, thank you, Congratulations sir. again, Manny. And I would like to, um, uh, I would like to thank SBO and to all the promoters, Golden Boy and Taprang Promotion, for giving me this uh, opportunity to fight in Mandalay Bay. Thank you very much, all the fans, the who uh, comes here tonight to watch the fight. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, Manny. I'm sorry. No problem. No problem. Marco Antonio. You came here to box him, to take away his power, but it seemed like you never were able to put fire under yourself. No, no, sí, hicimos buen boxeo. Eh, tan así se notó la diferencia de la primera esta. Con la pura mano izquierda estábamos dominando. Hasta que nos dio un pequeño cabezazo, pero bueno, ya la gente es el mejor juez. No, we boxed him well. We thought we, had, we were dominating with the left hand. Everything was well until I we got a headbutt and then everything changed. But Marco, your own corner was telling you that you had to go after him for the last three or four rounds. And that never happened. Why? Por, por lo difícil de su guardia zurda, cuando quise entrar fue cuando me agarró con un cabezazo. Y luego de salirla de un golpe que no tenían por qué bajarme un punto. Pero bueno, no pongo pretextos, no pongo excusas, entrené muy bien. Yo creo que toda la gente, los según que decían ser, eh, que hacen los pronósticos, que pensaban que me iba a destruir en tres rounds, pues ya vieron que no pudo, con la pura y mano izquierda tuvo. Bueno, well, it was very hard because he had a very strong defense and it was very hard to get into and break into that. And then they took a point away, which they shouldn't have, and then it was very strong. But we trained for that. But uh, many of the naysayers had negative attitudes towards us. Do but you feel overall. disappointed in this, your last fight? Pues me voy triste porque fueron contadas las golpes que él me metió, las rafaguitas que él me daba, como yo lo manejé con la mano izquierda. Pero bueno, no importa, estoy contento, estoy feliz porque es mi última pelea y todo se lo estapé la boca gracias a Golden Boy. Empecé con ellos y me retiro con ellos. I'm sad because I, I lost at the end, but uh, he hit me with very few punches, very few combinations. Uh, we, we thought we had it, but we thought we controlled it with the left. And overall, um, I'm happy. It's my closing fight, but I'm happy we started with De La Hoya and we finishing off the career with them. Uh, thank you, Marco Antonio. You've had a great career and given us many thrills. Al contrario, muchísimas gracias y que viva México! Jim? Marco Antonio Barrera retires having won 63 of his 69 fights. There were so many glorious occasions, so many brilliant performances. This Emmanuel Stewart was not one of them, but what an imprint he left on the sport. Yes, and he's been in so many great fights, you know, so I can let him get away with that. Probably been in more exciting fights than any small fighter that I can think of over such a period of almost 15 years of super fights. And totally saw him change from being an aggressive fighter to being a, a technical boxer and then it'd be a slugger when he had to do so. He's given us a lot of thrills. I wish he could have finished up a little stronger, but it is what it is. Manny Pacquiao is in an ongoing race to try to keep providing big thrills and perhaps surpass Floyd, May Floyd Mayweather in the estimation of boxing experts as the number one pound for pound fighter in the sport. He didn't really get a chance to do that tonight. No, he didn't, but he's a still exciting fighter. I like the energy that he has that lasts throughout the entire fight. He does things a little bit out of balance, out of position, but he's so aggressive and punches with so much authority that he can get away with that because guys become so defensive minded and they don't take advantage of his mistakes. I'm really looking forward to the rematch with Marquez if that ever takes place, though. Yeah, beginning tomorrow, uh, in fact, perhaps beginning right now, boxing media will focus on the question of when Manny Pacquiao signs a contract to fight Juan Manuel Marquez. And uh, all indications are, Larry Merchant, that fight could be coming up in the not-too-distant future. And unlike Barrera, who clearly is done, Marquez is still a very formidable force. We got the match we, wa we wanted. We didn't get the fight we wanted. I don't know who at this weight can give him a fight. But at the end of the day, it was the end of a career. And this is the way it ends for all fighters in one way or another. Marco Antonio Barrera was a great fighter, a drama king who gave us many thrilling moments in his fight, in his career. Tonight, in effect, he was paying homage to the next great drama king in boxing. And it'll remain to be seen how long will Pacquiao's run last? Obviously, the question before the fight was, with the massive distractions of his tumultuous life finally reel him in? The emphatic answer was no. Can Juan Manuel Marquez solve that equation? That remains to be seen. Manny Pacquiao continues to be that blur on the horizon too fast, too strong, too good for almost anybody to be in the ring with.
Thanks very much for being with us tonight. Pacquiao Barrera 2 has been brought to you by Mandalay Bay, boxing at its best. Tecate Beer, Cerveza with an attitude. Rockstar Energy Drink, party like a rock star. Southwest Airlines, symbol of freedom. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. We'd like to thank the following internet partners. And now for our entire crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada.